to go from panic attack about money to owning a cash flowing asset and access to thirty thousand dollars in ninety days is freaking mind blowing. Like I was just yeah. like, what just happened? What just ha-? like so I knew I had found the thing that it that it changed my financial future for, forever. All right, today I've got a special guest who's not only a real estate powerhouse, but might just be the funniest real estate investor on Instagram. And I'm not kidding. If you haven't been to his page, you need to check him out right now. It's at the Henry Washington on Instagram. He posts some of the funniest real estate investor memes I've ever seen. And on top of that, he's given out like solid advice. And what really stands out about him is his authenticity. And I think his journey and story can help a lot, a lot of people out there. Henry Washington, I'm just, I'm so happy to have you on here, man. I really appreciate this. Oh, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. I I, I appreciate you uh, asking me to be here, man. Yeah, man. So I got to tell you that, that key and peel video it it (laughs) took off it went viral that had me dying like i was sharing it with people that don't even invest in real estate and they were like not really getting it but all my real estate investor friends dying just dying (laughs) yeah man that one was pretty that one was pretty funny that's definitely some of my best work it it definitely was man and i i just saw another one the other day from you so yeah you got to follow this guy so henry a lot of people know your name uh, from Bigger Pockets, um, but and they know you're killing it in real estate. They know you have some mentorship programs that you're offering, and you just finished writing a book too, right? That's correct. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about that, but let's go back to the beginning because I think your your story it's it's very similar to mine, but you you've you've taken off in in a much uh, bigger way than I have. And I would like to hear your story on how you got into real estate in the first place. But before that, like, where were you at in your life prior to taking that real estate pill? Uh, I was working for Walmart. Um, I live out in Arkansas where Walmart's headquartered. So I was, uh, I have a technology background, so I was doing software development and data analytics for Walmart's uh, headquarters. And uh, you know, I did, I did, like, I did the thing that you're supposed to do, right? I, I got good grades in high school so that I could, you know, apply to colleges and get accepted. And then I uh, went to school, went to a private school in Virginia, and got my computer information systems degree. And then uh, chose the technology degree so that I can get a job fairly quickly that was actually going to make me some money. And so um, ended up um, in the technology field and um, kind of working my way up the corporate ladder. I was making good money. You know, I was making about a hundred, making about one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year, you know, working for working for Walmart. And this was twenty I left Walmart in 2020, like right before the pandemic hit, I retired um, from that corporate job. And so, you know, that was, that was pretty good money. You know, I, you know, I'd been making close to six figures for about, you know, four or five years before that, Um, you know, not as good money now because inflation's gone crazy since then. But, you know, at that point, and especially before I got married, I was single. And so making six figures as a single man, you know, I felt like, you know, I, I did, I did it. Like I did the thing and I was, I was working my way up and, and I was supposed to be like getting all of these, you know, uh, you know, have, enjoying this lifestyle of somebody that, you know, had done the things, done life the way that they tell you to do life as a kid. Right. And what I was starting to realize after I got engaged and it was that, even though I had done all those things and I was making good money, like I still didn't have enough to 
be comfortable, not as comfortable as I wanted to be. Um, you know, we bought our first house and we were, I mean, we were barely affording that. Um, I, we almost couldn't buy it. Well, I almost couldn't buy it because my credit was so bad. Um, actually, I didn't buy it. I, I paid the mortgage, but my wife's name was the only one on it because my credit was so bad. Um, you know, we, if we wanted to go on trips or do anything spontaneous, man, it just really, it, it, it took a lot for it to happen. And that's not, I'm not blaming that all on the fact that, you know, a hundred thousand dollars wasn't enough money. A lot of it was, I spent more than I made. Like I just, I wasn't smart with my money and, um, and, uh, that the ripple effects of not being smart with my money now didn't just impact me. They impacted my wife as well. And that was really the wake up call when I couldn't buy the house. And like, I was starting to see that my poor financial decisions were the, the, the harmful effects of them were spilling over onto her. It really kind of punched me in the gut and made me realize, man, like you've got to figure out a way to make more money and be more responsible with the money that you have so that a, you're not impacting somebody else by your poor decisions and B um, that, that I could afford to give her the things in life that I felt like she deserved. Cause I couldn't give her what, what the things we wanted. We couldn't go on all the trips we wanted or we couldn't, you know, even planning for kids, like you start doing the math. And I was like, man, I don't know how we're going to afford a kid. And I don't know. Daycare is, is like the biggest bill bigger than a mortgage. Like it's crazy. Like I just didn't know how it was all going to work. And I started to freak out and, and essentially all that landed me in a panic attack, Keith, um, at three in the morning, one morning. So that's, that's where I was prior to getting the bug. Wow. I don't, I don't use the term lightly. Like I, it was a legitimate real life panic attack. Like it's, it's, it was intense and scary and, uh, but life changing. Wow. Wow. So you were at a crossroads pretty much in your life where you needed to figure out you need to live, you needed to live your life differently in order to move forward. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right. So how did you bump into real estate? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> there's a joke a guy told me once. Uh, when he, when he, when he was introducing me to talk on stage one time, he was like, you know, when you have a panic attack at three in the morning about not making enough money and you're freaking out, you don't know what to do. There's only one thing to do. And that's, you sit there and you turn to the one place you would think to turn to for some answers it begins with the G. Yeah. There you go. Google. <laughs> you got me there, man. <laughs> <laughs> And so I Googled, how do I make extra money? And I, and I'm not making light. I'm, I'm Christian. I believe in, I believe in God. I pray all the time. And so I did, there was lots of prayer as well. Absolutely. Lots of prayer, but I Googled how to make extra money. God led you uh, to Google. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, that Google search of how to make extra money. I like, it was just Googling things that I'd heard before, but didn't know what they mean. Like, you know, passive income and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I was just trying to figure side hustles. Like I was like anything that I could get some extra money. Like, how do I figure out what that stuff means? And like, as I was Googling all of these buzzwords, I was noticing like every search result had something that included an article or a story or a podcast about real estate investing. And I was like, well, what's all this about? And I started two two things happened. I watched a video about passive income. And essentially the, the video I watched, the guy was explaining just a really basic way of what passive income is. And it's just like, Hey, you don't need to make a million dollars to be financially free. If you can make enough money to cover your expenses, then technically you don't have to have a job. So if you only need $5,000 a month to pay your bills and you can find a side hustle or a gig or a passive income stream that pays you five grand a month, well, technically you don't have to work. And I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And then he said, the way I did it was through real estate. I just, start, I just started buying real estate. I own, he said he owned like 20 or 22 houses or something like that. And that gave him enough passive income to be financially free. And I was like, in my head, I was like, that doesn't seem like that much. 
It doesn't seem like yeah, a lot. Yeah. Like it seems achievable to me. Now, mind you, like I had none of the things that would allow me to think that that was achievable. I had no money for a down payment. I had a thousand dollars saved up in my savings account. I had bad credit still. Like I didn't have any of the pieces that would make you think that like being a real estate investor was a good idea, but just the whole conceptually, I was like, this seems doable. Like, you know, not in the next you know month or so, but like, I could buy some houses. I'll figure that part out. And so I was just like, it was the first time where I was like, I think I can do this. Like if this kid figured it out, all these people in all these articles figured it out. Like it's got to be achievable. They can't all be business masterminds. They've got to just be normal people. And so I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. So I'm, a, I'm just going to go figure out how to do this. And <clears throat> I just had this overwhelming sense of peace about that decision. And I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and told my wife that I found out that real estate investing was awesome and we were going to do that. And she was like, cool, let's do it. And um, so then we did all the things, right? We read Rich Dad, Poor Dad together. We read The Richest Man in Babylon and uh, we read um, uh, The Millionaire Next Door and uh, you know, merely a real estate investor. Like we went down the list of all the books, right? Uh, and we, we read them mostly, for the most part, we read them together to kind of go on this journey together and be on the same page. And at that same time of all that research, I did a few things um, that looking back now were really smart things. Like I don't want to give people like this thought that I was super smart and figured out exactly how I was going to do it from the start. It wasn't that. But um, I'm just a big believer in in this life, you get what you give. So if you want something, you got to put that thing out there into the universe so that God yeah. can return that to you. And if you don't believe in God, that's on you. Call it the universe. I don't care. If you want something, put it out there in the universe. The universe will return the things that go with that. That's just how it works, right? If you, if you wanted to get punched in the stomach, if your life depended on getting punched in the stomach right now and you needed to get punched in the stomach, what are you going to go do in the next five minutes? I'm going to go sock someone so they'll punch me in the stomach. <laughs> exactly right. You're going to go punch someone in the stomach because that's how you go. You get what you give, right? That's right. I just started telling people I was a real estate investor. I didn't, I never bought a house. I didn't know how to buy a house. I didn't, I had no, I didn't know where the damn payment was going to come from. I didn't know where the financing was going to come from. I didn't know how I was going to renovate it. I didn't know anything, but I just started telling people I'm a real estate investor. I'm buying rental, I'm buying rental properties. Let me know if you have something, right? Like I just told that to everybody. And um, the second thing I did was uh, <clears throat> I was very, very intentional about surrounding myself with people who were actually doing it because I was like, I don't know how to do it. I got to find people who know how to do it so I can see what the heck they're doing. Like, you know, it wasn't just like I follow people on social media. Like I found every real estate meetup in my local market that I could find. And I went to like every meeting religiously. My meet, my local real estate investment group met three times a month, um, four times a month. So they had like a main meeting and like three like sub meetings under different topics. I went to every meeting. One of them was for like builders and developers. I don't want to build or develop. But I didn't know what I didn't know at the time. And I was like, these people know more than me. So I'm going to go sit my butt in this room and listen to them. And so um, uh, the, the point was like, there's you want to use human nature or the laws of life in your favor, right? And so I, I just figured if I can get myself around people who are successful and consistently stay around them, gonna figure out how to do it like that's how it works that's why your parents tell you when you're young like don't hang around idiots because you'll just be the fifth idiot like you know, they tell you if you're you know if, if billy jumps off a cliff are you gonna jump off a cliff too like most likely you will because that's who you're hanging out with like but if you flip the script and you surround yourself with people who are successful at what you're doing that paints the picture like who we surround ourselves with paints a picture of like what we believe is achievable. And so like if you surround yourself with people who are doing things that you want to do, even though you don't know how to do it, like it, you'll know it's achievable and you won't feel like it's this thing you can't go accomplish. We interviewed a guy on Bigger Pockets one time. His first very first deal he ever did was a 
uh, you know, over a hundred unit apartment complex. And when we asked them, like, what made you want to do that for your first deal? Most people buy a single and then a duplex, and then they slowly work their way up to a multifamily because it's, you know, it's expensive. It's a hard process. And he was like, honestly, like everybody I hung out with bought apartment buildings. And so when it was time to get started, I just bought an apartment building because I just, that's what everybody did. Like, I, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. Right. Like, and, and so like, it's you, what, who you see around you doing things, lets you know what's possible. And so I surrounded myself with other investors so I could learn the process. I told everybody I was an investor that led me to my first deal. A buddy of mine heard that I was buying rental property. I worked with him. He was a friend of mine. He called me and he said, man, I'm in a tough spot with this house, with the house, my, with my personal home. He had been renting it out for about a year and some change. And the guy was supposed to turn around and buy it by a certain date because he needed to go buy another piece of property and he needed this money and the guy couldn't buy the house. And he was like, dude, if I can't sell this house in 30 days, I don't have the money I need to go buy this other property. Can you help me? It's just, dude, I'll sell it to you for cheap. As long as I can get X, Y, Z amount of dollars out of it, then you can have it. I don't care what it's worth. So he was like, he was selling it to me for $116,000 and it was worth like 165. He was like, that's all I need is to sell it for 116. So if you can close on it in 30 days, bro, you can have it. And I was like, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> and, and and the only reason he even brought that property to you is because you were already in that zone of I'm a real estate investor. This is what I'm going to yeah. do. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So you, attra yeah. you attracted that deal because of what you put in front of you, what you were surrounding yourself yeah. um, in. Yeah. And so that that's how you attracted that first deal to you. Now, was it a turnkey property where you could just go and rent it out? I wouldn't call it turnkey, but we did just rent it out. So what the, what happened was he says, buy the house for 116. Can you do it in 30 days? And I had no idea how to buy a house at all. And so I just looked at him and I was like, yeah, man, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he worked in my same building. And so after I said, yeah, he was like, all right, well, what do we do? And I was like, I'll hold that thought. And I ran back to my desk and I Googled how you buy a house without a real estate agent. And it said that you needed to sign a contract, like a purchase and sale agreement. And I was like, cool, where do you get a purchase and sale agreement? And so I just downloaded some random purchase and sale agreement off the internet. I put our names on it, yeah. put their home price on it. And we signed this document that's not, legal advice. Don't do that. It's a terrible idea, but it's like, that's the mindset I had is like, I was going to figure out each problem in front of me and then wor and worry about the next one when it comes. So we signed the contract and he was like, all right, so we're closing in 30 days. And I was like, yep. <laughs> so I, uh, I, uh, I was like, I need some money. Cause I, I don't have, I only have a thousand dollars in my savings account. So I was like, all right, well, I'll go to a bank and see if I can get a loan because banks have money. Right. And so I walked into the bank that was pretty close to my office uh, because that's, I just didn't know where to start. So I'll go to the bank that's close to my office. I walked in there with the contract in my hand and I asked if I could speak to somebody about buying, you know, this house and the commercial loan officer just happened to be in the lobby. When I walked in, he looked at the contract and he looked at the address and he Googled it. And he was like, man, this is a really good deal for this house. He was like, we'd love to do a loan on this. Um, as long as you got a 15% down payment, we can do a loan. I was like, cool. How much is that? And he was like, it's probably going to be about 20 grand, <laughs> you know? And I was like, sweet. He's like, you got 20 grand. And I was like, yep. I did not have 20 grand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, I then went to this real estate network I had from all these meetups I've been going to and was like, how the heck do you guys find all this money to do this stuff? Like I got a deal. And so one of the, one of the investors who is now a business partner of mine, but at the time was just a, another investor we were hanging out with. And he brainstormed with me all these ideas for how to get the money. And none of them were going to work until he came up or for, until he told me about the idea of a 401k loan. And, you know, I won't get into the details of all, how all that works, but it turned out to be the perfect solution to be able to get access to the money that we needed because, um, you know, you can borrow from your 401k and pay yourself back with interest. And I was like, sweet. Well, I'm not going to be paying it back. My tenants will. So that's even better. So uh, uh, the only catch with that plan was, is that I didn't have a 401k. 
So, oh, I had to, I had to go to my wife and ask her to borrow it from her 401k. And so we did that, man. We borrowed it from her 401k. We bought the house. Uh, the person who was living there, um, we raised the rents to market rents and we said, you know, you can stay if you want. Um, but we're going to have to raise the rents. And so that's what he did. He stayed, we raised the rents and, uh, we started cash flowing almost immediately. So, um, uh, we didn't really have to renovate it until he moved out in a couple of years. Okay. So that was, that was your first one. And so you, you went ahead and became a, a landlord at the same time. So I'm sure you were probably Googling your way through that as well, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, I was. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, go, how do I create Google. a lease? <laughs> That's 100%. We had to go find a lease and have a lawyer look at it and make sure it was legitimate and get all the documentation in place in terms of the lease. Um, figured out how to go figure out how to collect rent. At that point, I didn't have a process for any of it. I was like, however you want to pay me, I'll take it. Like, you're going to pay me money to live here? Get, just, if you want to give it to me. Like, I don't care how you give it to me. Yeah, um, yeah, it yeah. wasn't until I bought my like fifth property that I was like, I can't collect rent five different ways and then get it to the bank five different times. And so it forced me to put some systems in place to save myself some time. But that first one, I was like, whatever it takes, like, <laughs> we're gonna make it work. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been there. I'm, I remember one of my first tenants, I used to meet at a gas station and he'd hand me a wad of cash every month. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> I mean, what we went through, you know, and I had like one, one tenant sending a check, one tenant, uh, you know, Venmo, another tenant using something yeah. else. And yeah, finally, you know, after about like five, six properties, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, there's no way I'm right. going to meet this guy at the gas station every, every month. Um, right. So yeah, man, you lit, you live and learn and, and you, you start creating, uh, policies and procedures that you yeah. can follow. Right. Yeah. How did you go from having that first one? You stumbled through it, but it, it turned out pretty, pretty successful, but you still didn't have any money. Cause now you had a, a loan against your 401k, you had cash flow coming in. But how did you get to that next one? Yeah, man. Um, so that process, right, taught me a lot. Um, but what it really taught me was that in order for you to be a successful real estate investor, you need two things, right? You need deals to buy. So you got to have properties you can buy at a discount. And then you need money to buy those deals, right? If you've got those two things, then you'll grow your business at whatever pace you're comfortable growing your business at. And so I realized I was like, okay, this worked because I had a deal and the bank gave me the money to buy it. And then I borrowed the down payment, right? Because I didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason these things worked. The bank gave me 85%. I borrowed the 15% and I had a really good deal to buy. So if I want to do this again, I have to, I have to repeat the process by solving those two problems, which means I got to go find another really good deal to buy. And then I got to get a bank to give me 85%. And then I got to find another place to borrow the 15%. And, uh, luckily for me, I walked into a small local bank that time where the, and, the, and that commercial lender was like, yeah, we want to lend to you. So he called me after we closed and he was like, Hey, great job glad we got to do some business together. This was a really good deal. So we would like you to bring us more of these. And so have you thought about taking out a line of credit on the equity you have in the house you just bought with us? And I was like, I don't know what that means. And so he walked me through like what a line of credit is. And I applied for it. And that same bank gave me a line of credit to the tune of about just under $30,000. You know, because I was able to access the equity or 75% of the equity, 85% of the equity that was in that house on a line of credit. And he was like, you bring us another deal like this, we'll, we'll finance it the same way. And then you can use this line of credit as your down payment. And I was like, oh, so I don't have to bring any of my own money. He was like, no, you got the line of credit for your down payment. We're going to give you 85%. You got to go find another good deal. And I was like, that's when the light bulb went off. I was like, oh, okay. So I found the money now. I just got to go find the deals. And if I can find the deals, I know I got the money to buy whatever I need. And so exactly. 
I was like, I got to figure out how to continue to find deals. Like I can't just expect people to bring me a great deal, you know, two, three great deals a month. And so I was like, who in real estate is good at finding deals? Like who can I study? That's really good at finding deals. And in real estate, we know that's typically the wholesalers, right? They spend all their time and effort marketing for deals. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to read every book I can about wholesaling, not because I want to wholesale. I didn't want to wholesale at all. I don't wholesale. I've probably only wholesaled like maybe eight to 10 deals in my career. Everything else has all been closed on and I've done hundreds of deals. And so I was like, I'm just going to study wholesalers make my business like theirs in terms of lead gen. And then I'll just close on everything that I want. And so that's what I did. I just studied wholesalers. I read every wholesaling book I could learned all the marketing tactics and started implementing them. And that's how I started generating lead flow. And I got really, really good at that. So now I had leads coming in and I had money to buy the houses. And, you know, my goals before all that started was to buy one house a year for five years because I didn't know what was possible. But after I bought that first one and then saw that I had access to the money, we did like five deals in our first month. Yeah, because you 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 hit your strategy was let me find a house where I can make money when I buy it. Right. A lot of people yeah. don't look at homes that way. They look at, hey, I'm going to make money when I sell it. But you're like, I'm going to make money when I buy it. I'm going to get these homes at a deep discount because I know that's my money. That's I can I can borrow yeah. money from that to scale up. And so you did that. You got a formula and it worked. And you were also, I think the market too was like probably in your favor with interest rates were starting to creep down too at the same time, right? Well, at that time, this was 2017. So interest rates were about just a little bit under where they are now. I mean, uh, we were probably buying, we were buying stuff at about 6%. Okay. So, so during COVID during 2020, 2021, you probably were able to really like capitalize on that then. Cause you had yeah, all these sure. homes. Yeah, I did too. That that's when I quit my day job. I was like, I'm done. I refinanced an entire portfolio and I'm like, I'm quitting my, and I was in tech, I was in the tech industry too. And I hated yeah. it. Um, and, and I, and I have friends now that are still in and AI is taking over their jobs and it's just crazy. And they're like, Hey man, I want to get in real estate. What do I got to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's awesome, man. I, I love how you've just, you were just like, you had that mindset. You were surrounding yourself with the right people. You were putting vision boards up. You know, the, the, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm a real estate investor. This is what we're going to do. It's exactly what my wife and I did is. I mean, we still to this day have a vision board every year, January, you know, end of end of December. We put together all the things we want in our life and not everything happens. Not everything materializes. But I can tell you what, if you're waking up every morning and you're looking at your goals, you're going to be damn sure yeah. that the majority of them may that happen, especially if you have like kids and stuff that are watching you do this. You want to show them that, you know, this works. You set your mind yeah. to something, you can accomplish it. So that's exactly what you did, man. It's it's beautiful to see how you were able to do that. So when did you, so you were still working at Walmart until when? Until 2020. 2020 was your, your that was like the same time yeah. that I was like, I'm done. So you were able to have enough cash flow coming in that it just completely replaced your nine to five income. The answer to that is yes, but that's not, why I quit. I had enough cash flow coming in well before 2020 to quit my job if I wanted to. Um, but I didn't hate my job and uh, it made me more bankable. So like I was able to grow and scale faster because I had my job um, because the banks were more willing to give me loans because I had my job because uh, I didn't have to live off my cash flow. So um, it didn't limit me. And so I, I kept my job as long as I could. I, I quit. I didn't quit till it cost me money to have a job, if that makes any sense. Like having it having does. the job yeah, so was, was costing me money. It was costing you time, probably, too, right? More than anything. Yeah, my, my earning potential was so much higher outside of the job that I, it didn't didn't make sense for me to stay working. You know, they they were asking more of me when I quit. They wanted me to put in more hours and uh, I talked to my wife about it and I was like, uh, we got a decision to make because if I give them more hours, that's less time I can spend in the real estate business. And she was like, well, how much do you make? 
hourly doing real estate. And I did the math and she was like, well, how much do you make hourly at Walmart? And I did the math and I showed her and she was like, looks like you need to quit. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it looks like I need to quit. So, um, that's what we did. Nice. So now you're just all about real estate. It's, when, when did you, when did you decide to become an evangelist? Cause that's really what you've become is evangelist <laughs> for real estate. So when did that yeah. like that decision take off where you're like, you know what, I, what I, this has helped my, uh, our lives. I want to yeah. help other people out. When did you get to that point? Almost immediately after I did that first deal. So, um, after I did that first deal, it was 90 days after I had that panic attack when we closed on that house. And, um, and then when my banker called me and asked me to take out a line of credit, uh, and he told me how much it was going to be. I remember getting off that phone and just thinking, what just happened? Like <laughs> 90 days ago, I was freaking out, literally in tears, panicking. Cause I'm like, my wife's going to leave me cause I can't give her the life she needs. I can't, I don't know how to make enough money to do that. Like I've got this debt, you know, bad credit and, I, I can't provide what do I, and, and then 90 days later, I own an asset that's paying for itself and paying me for owning it. Mm -hmm. And now this banker just said, you're about to have access to another $30,000. Like to go from panic attack about money to owning a cash flowing asset and access to $30,000 in 90 days is freaking mind blowing. Like I was just yeah. like, what? just happened what just it's like so i knew i found the thing that it that it changed my financial future for, forever like it was and i was just overwhelmed with the sense of like don't get me wrong i was happy like but i i was really overwhelmed with the sense of responsibility like mm -hmm. i just sat there and i thought there's just no way god led me down this path and opened all these doors just so that I could learn how to make money and be wealthy like that doesn't add up to me. The only thing I could come up with is that he led me down this path and opened all these doors so that I could show other people that they're so much closer to being okay than they think they are. There's got to be other people who are just like in way worse situations than me mm -hmm. financially mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. can do exactly what I did in a matter of 90 days, just like I did and change their financial future. They just don't know that they can do it. No one's told them that it's possible. No one that looks like them has showed them that it's possible. No one, yeah. it, they, they, just, they just don't know, but yeah, it's yeah. right there. And so I said, okay, if that's what God wants me to do, then I gotta, I gotta share this with people. And I don't know how to do that. I, had a very limited social media presence. I wasn't really big into social media at all. I had an Instagram account that maybe I'd posted like two pictures on ever. Uh, I would yeah. I'd barely get on Facebook. I still don't get on Facebook to this day. Like I've yeah, I barely touched that. Facebook. Um, and so um, I was like, all right, well, I'll just, I'll just put it on the internet. Cause that's where I'll put it on Facebook. I'll put it on Instagram. Cause that's where people are. And if somebody sees it, hopefully it helps them. And so I just started like documenting stuff like, before and afters of properties, like literally anything I could think to like document, to share, I would just put mm -hmm. it up there. I wasn't trying to create, like I didn't have any plans to have a social media following like I do now. I just was like, I'll share it with people. And if that's what I'm supposed to do, then somebody will see it. And that's turned into what you see now on social media. Like I just felt like I was supposed to share this with people. Well, I can tell you, you've definitely blessed a lot of people. Um, you've inspired a lot of people. Um, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've like shared one of your posts with somebody that I've been talking to and like, see, that's what I was saying. Um, yeah. so I, I, I really do thank you for that. And so tell, tell us, tell me about your book. Like, when's it, is it released yet? When's it going to be released? How do people get yeah. their hands on it? Comes out in early May. Um, you'll be able to get it. Uh, on biggerpockets.com or on amazon.com anywhere you get your books you'll be able to get it 
Um, it's called Real Estate Dealmaker. Um, but it's a beginner's guide to finding and funding your next real estate deal. So um, it covers the two topics that I, I talked to you about. It's if you want to grow and scale a business, if you want to be a real estate investor, you got to solve those two problems. You got to solve for deals and you got to solve for money. If you can solve for deal flow and money flow, then you can build your business. Whether you want one property or 21 properties, you got to find a good deal and you got to find the money. And so the whole premise of the book, it's kind of split into two parts. The first part of the book is about um, deals. The second part of the book is about uh, matching the money to those deals. Um, but essentially it, it teaches people, you know, how to go out and find a good deal and then how to find financing that fits that deal in your financial situation. I think what most people do in this space is they find a deal and then they go just try to finance it with whatever type of financing they understand, right? Maybe they only understand conventional loans. Yeah. And so they're out here trying to find a conventional loan for that property. But if you don't got a 20% down payment, then a conventional loan is not going to work. Why are you trying to go to, to go make that work, right? You know, or, or some people yeah. only understand, you know, creative financing or owner financing. And so they're out here trying to make creative financing offers on every property. But that's cool until you're trying to buy a house that needs a hundred thousand dollar renovation like who's going to give yeah. you a hundred grand the owner's not like you gotta go yeah. you gotta go find a hundred grand if you want to do so that may not be the best financing for that deal and so what i want to do is teach people like what are all the ways that you can finance a deal or underwrite a deal and then that way if you understand there's all these different ways i can underwrite this deal then you can underwrite the financing that fits the deal and your financial situation sorry where those two things intersect, that's the financing you should use, right? Yeah. Great, great advice, man. Ah, oh, wow. Imagine if you would have stumbled into yourself a few years earlier, um, where you'd be right now, right? Like you would have never even had that panic attack. The information just wasn't there, like as readily available as it is now back then. Like, yeah, you know, a lot happened. A lot happened in 20, like between 2017 and now in terms of like social media and online education, because COVID kind of sped up that process for people um, yeah. that there's just more information readily available for people now. And you have a coaching program too, right? That's correct. If someone's interested in that coaching program, what's the best way? Just get, get with you on Instagram and. Yeah, um, there's a few ways, right? So you can. It's called the closing table mastermind. Like my shirt says, the best thing to, to do is if you're, if you're interested in wanting to be one of my mentees or be coached by me, you can hop on Instagram and uh, shoot me a DM that just, that just says the word table T A B L E and we'll get you an application to apply. Uh, or you can just jump directly into the application at our website, www.cuattheclosingtable.com, spelled out S-E-E-Y-O-U-A-T, theclosingtable.com, and you can fill out the application there. And um, uh, But, you know, first and foremost, just follow me on Instagram, man. I, I post stuff about it all the time on there. You'll, you'll be able to find your way to it that way, um, at the Henry Washington on Instagram. So those things will get you to it. Definitely, you want to follow this man. Um, if even if you're already thinking you're killing it in real estate, the guy's always putting out great content, um, stuff that will just make you roll on the ground, uh, with laughter, <laughs> and just stuff that will teach you on how to how to do things differently, right? Um, yeah, and and because there's so many different paths in real estate, I tell people this all the time. There's like there's so many places to start. Um, and there's really no wrong road because every road that you go down, you're going to learn from it. Um, so that's, that's, right. that's something else to think about. A lot of people are scared to even try and that's their first mistake. But like your, your story, you're like, Nope, I'm a real estate investor and that's right. nope, I don't have the money, but you told the maker, yep, I, I know where to get the money and you got figure it. it out, so man. you got to just figure it out. So, Hey Henry, it was great talking with you before I let you go. I always ask this. Is there any like quote, mantra or advice you can give our listeners that kind of like it stands in the forefront of your mind that you can share? Um, I'll, I'll say two things, man. Um, you know, I'll give you some practical advice for people um, that you can apply right now. 
So if you're watching this and you want to get started and you're like, yeah, Henry, you just said, go figure it out. That's cool. But like, what does that really mean? If you want to be a successful real estate investor, you have to find a good deal and you have to find the money, right? We established that. So if you're brand new or if you're just trying to get to your next deal, whatever the case is, there's only two things you need to be focused on. Like put the blinders on. Don't do, don't worry about anything else other than these two things. Literally nothing else matters. Figure out what does a good deal look like in my market? right? Real estate's very market specific. A good deal where I'm at may not be a good deal where somebody else is at. So figure out what does a good deal look like in my market? You can do that by talking to investors who are doing deals. Literally, that's that's an easy way to figure out what people are buying, what they're buying it for, and how they're making money. The second thing you need to figure out is how am I going to go find those good deals, right? Pick a strategy. There's a million of them. I use direct mail, but you can use mail, you can use cold calls, you can use the, use the MLS and make offers on on-market properties or strategies behind doing that. You can literally Google this stuff. There's a bunch of people that tell you a million different ways about how to find good deals. The super secret sauces, literally all of those ways work. You just have to pick the one that you feel like you can do relentlessly, consistently until it works. Pick one and then do that relentlessly, consistently until you get a deal, period. Once you get that deal, you'll figure the rest out. Don't worry about the money right now. Everybody's like, well, I don't have the money for a deal. You don't even know if you'll need money for the deal because you don't know what the deal looks like. It could, it could be an owner finance deal where you don't have to put anything down. It could be it could be a wholesale where you don't need any money. Like yeah. you have no idea if you need money or not. Quit trying to figure out the money. Go find the deal. Once you get that deal under contract, then you can go figure out the rest. Then you'll find a contractor. Then you'll find a title company. Then you'll find a, you know, the money you need. Like none of those things matter until you have a deal anyway. So why are you trying to solve for those things before you have a yeah. deal? Go find the deal. Um, the second thing I would tell people is never, ever forget that these are people's homes we're dealing with. Right? People live there. They raise their families there. They, they, sometimes it's the only little bit of wealth they've ever accumulated. These are people's homes and this is a people business. It's not a real estate business. It's a people business that transacts in real estate. So never forget, like, don't forget to put people first. What we say in our company is we don't always make the best business decision. I'd be lying to you if I told you I was the best businessman there was, but we always try to make the best people decision. And if that people decision costs our business money, that's okay. We can live with that. Our goal is to take care of people. You're going to walk into people's homes and they're going to be trying to sell their house to you because they need out, because they need money to solve some problem. If you can solve that problem without buying that house, I feel like we have an obligation to try to do that. That's the responsible thing to do. And if that costs you money or time, that's okay. Another deal's around the corner. Help those people. That's it. That, 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 that is definitely some great advice. People first, profit second. It's uh, it's it's a definitely it's a good strategy. It's a good way to live your life. And like you said in the very beginning, I'm bringing this full circle. What you put out, you'll get back. That's how the that's way. Right. That's how the world works. Thanks, Henry. I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I'm gonna keep following you. And you know what? I'm gonna see you at the closing table. Yes, sir. That's the best place to see you. See you at the closing.